Good morning. It is March 25th, uh, 2020, and we're here at Patient Prism uh, Makeshift Studios at my house um, to talk about uh, teledentistry. And I have with me here um, uh, Brent Harmon. He's the co-founder and CEO of Mouthwatch, an industry leader in the space. Um, uh, Brent has been a, a phenomenal uh, resource uh, to the industry at this moment of need when teledentistry is becoming, uh, when people are thinking about this as, as, as practices close down all over the country for emergency only procedures, uh, people are looking for advice on what they can do. Um, mouthwatch products are basically used now in 18,000 practices across the country. Brent's a nationally recognized speaker on this topic. Um, in, including his, his spearheading the Teledentistry Innovation Awards. Brian, welcome to the show. Uh, excited to have you here this morning. Yeah, thanks you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, so talk to us a little bit about um, uh, what Mouthwatch is doing. Obviously, Teledentistry is something you've been involved with for a long time. Um, tell us a little bit, a, a brief intro to our, uh, our, our, our audience about what Teledentistry can do today. Yeah, teledentistry is more important now than ever. Uh, now we see this need for a closed practice to still be in their lives of their patients. So that can happen through two ways. The technical terms are asynchronous or synchronous teledentistry. So asynchronous, think email. It's a message that's shared with you with some clinical information and the provider can get back to the patient based on what they see. And then synchronous is what we're doing now. It's a live video consult that allows a doctor to speak with a patient. A lot of your viewers are probably familiar with Teladoc and doing a live video consult with their doctor or physician. It's allowing that extended into the homes of their patients and the doctors are able to do that while they might be at home and unable to go into the office under shelter in place order or something like that. So it really allows doctors to consult with their patients to do a range of things from triage emergencies to simply communicate or follow up, answer any concerns, um, and potentially avoid an office visit. And if there is a need for an office visit, understand it in more detail so it's more effective for both the patient and for the provider and the office team. So it's, it's a platform that is um, suited obviously for this time especially given the fact that even in states, there's about 38 states in my opinion that, that do not have those orders yet where dentists then then can still perform. I think it might be a good idea to just triage the patient right there and, and kind of solve their need. And if they, they meet the criteria, uh, then have them come in and, and, and do the procedure. Right, and we're seeing a lot of people implement it now where it is that first tool. So you can ask COVID screening questions. You can ask for a patient's temperature or ask if they've exhibited any symptoms. You can also understand the need for treatment. And it's amazing what you can see, you know, between a webcam when you're kind of doing an oral evaluation with a webcam um, and asking, you know, the clinical questions to determine the patient's need to determine, is it an emergency? Is this something I can only call in a prescription for right now? the patient a week and see what happens. Um, you want that visual evaluation to determine certain aspects. Is there swelling? Is there inflammation? Is there bleeding? Um, and not just rely on what previously was the patient's description of an oral issue on a phone call. And I know every dentist has had the patient who says, no, it's just a little tiny chip. It should take a minute and you're in for a two hour procedure. Um, so we really want to help with that evaluation. And, and this can be all done within your platform, I'm assuming. Right. So we have a turnkey HIPAA compliant teledentistry platform. So we allow all of your providers in your practice, so multiple dentists, hygienists, office team, they're all registered within Teledent. And then you invite patients from Teledent into a patient portal. So that allows them to message you from their smartphone, from their browser. They could do real-time chat with your practice or a specific provider. We also allow you as the doctor to initiate a video conference with them so you sure. can do a real-time consult. But we see a lot of patients using it now just to, taking pictures on their cell phone, attaching them in the consult you know, questionnaire. We're seeing doctors include COVID screening questions that they're sharing with patients, getting that in, um, and then 
kind of teeing up their day of live consults, right? Let me check on all of the patients that had procedures in the last couple of months, see that everything's okay, and whatever the required treatment might be or you know, advice would be, home care instruction, I can then offer that in this way, which is a lot more personable. So, so how do you get your existing patients into your system? Is there a automatic way or do you enter them one at a time? So we have the ability when a group comes on to invite everyone into it. We haven't been recommending that because it's just something we want people to kind of ramp up, invite some early patients as they see a need. Just like right now, they're getting a call about that consultation and question. We want them to take that patient, invite them into the Teledent portal, and then start communicating with the patient that way. There are reimbursement tools for this. So you're gonna need photography, you're gonna need video conferencing in order to bill for a limited evaluation, sure. a problem-focused evaluation. Sure. So no one's really saying you could do that over the phone. Um, they're saying you could do that with a live video conference. And there's a landscape that's ever-changing and some of the HIPAA restrictions have been lifted, but that's really just the penalties that have been lifted. There's still liability that your practice is open to if HIPAA, you know, if PHI is shared where it shouldn't have been. So I steer people away. I know it's convenient and you want to treat your patient and get the need there and solve it. But systems like Google Hangouts or Facebook Messenger or FaceTime, they're great. Zoom. But long term to protect your practice, we think you want to have a HIPAA compliant solution. So from a logistics standpoint, let's look at logistics of a practice, right? I'm a practice. I'm a dentist. Uh, I have a, a single practice and I have, uh, let's say, a thousand active patients. Um, I am closed except for emergencies right now. Um, and I need to communicate with my patients, all my patients, right. that, um, that I am um, doing teledentistry via mouthwatch. Um, how, do I, how do I do that? How do I enroll potentially all my patients uh, into this platform and then um, and then communicate with them saying that, hey, not that everybody's gonna have an dental emergency, but if you do, this is the way to do it. Yeah, so we try to have a pretty flexible solution. I think there's a range of ways. One of the ways, let's say if I was a practice owner, what I would do, I would send an email out to all of my patients, letting them know, reassure them, we understand this is a frightening time, we're still here to be your dentist. We wanna okay. help answer any questions you have during this time, reassure you. If you have a concern and you're stuck at home and you're eating too much canned food and you might chip your tooth, we're still here to help you. And then give them a link where they can request registration into the patient portal. Okay. We could still import everyone and get you set up and we're adding integration shortly. But I would say that's the first step is this marketing message to your patient of sure. oh, we're available to you. That might be a hygienist who's talking to a mom about home care. It might be the dentist evaluating what a patient's describing that sounds like an emergency. Then invite those patients. Patients register and confirm. So it's HIPAA compliant. They're confirming their identity. And then they're in the portal and they can message with any of the providers in the group that are available to them. That might be just chatting, right? Doc, I'm having a concern. I think I might need to come into the office, but I'm afraid to. That could be then a questionnaire is sent in that chat message where the patient answers those questions. You could send sure. attachments to them. So if they want to fill out a digital health history, which we sure. have available, they could fill that out and send it back. And then really the doctor could sit there and say, okay, I think we should have a video conference. How about 11 p.m. 11 a.m. your time? Right? So it's both of them put it on their calendar. The doctor initiates it. And now we're doing what we're doing. We also have the ability because we also make a great interval camera that's affordable. For the certain type of patient, we might drop ship a camera to that patient so that if it is a complex case or a patient who's done a lot of work with your practice, sure. they could buy the camera, plug that into their computer, and now you're getting a full intraoral exam in addition to a webcam. So we're seeing some practices do that. Buy six cameras, have them at the ready if they need to give them out to patients. But really, just with their webcam or the camera on their cell phone, they can then do that live consultation, get the answers that they need, triage the emergency. You know, if the office is not allowed to do emergency procedures, which is happening in a couple of states now and potentially more, then it becomes, okay, now we need to get you to a 
operating room where this procedure could be taken care of with the right PPE and infection control standards. So it really allows that level from checking in on a patient, reassuring them if there's a minor question or concern, conducting an evaluation, still documenting the encounter so that later after practices have done a bunch of limited evaluations via teledentistry, you have recordings of all of these video conferences that you did. That's one great thing our system does. So if you're ever audited or if they're ever, ever looking and coming back and saying, well, you said you did 5,000 virtual consults during the COVID outbreak, you've got documentation on each of those. Right, right. And, and, and then uh, as far as, and I've, I've been watching the insurance industry, uh, I think United Concordia last week and, and, and many of the dental insurance uh, providers are, are now approving teledentistry, at least maybe for a short period of time. Uh, and, and, and some codes have been made available for billing. Is that correct? Yeah, so the codes, the teledentistry codes are almost like dental versions of a modifier code you might find in medical. So what you're typically seeing is a DO140, so a limited evaluation, or a DO170, I believe, or a 171, kind of an emergency evaluation. Those are the codes that the ADA is recommending you use. There's also a care coordination code, and we're going to keep having resources available on our website about this. So doctors are going to want to bill for that, and then what they're going to do is tack on a teledentistry code. Was it done synchronously or was it done asynchronously? So that's D995 and D996 are the teledentistry codes. I see. Now, now what happens um, um, uh, if it's in the non-emergency? Let's say I have clear aligners, and um, obviously I, they're, you know, I have to replace them every two weeks or whatever that cadence is. Mm -hmm. And I need to, and, and it, they're getting tight and I need a new pair. Um, what can, can, can orthodontic consultations be done with your dentistry? So, yeah, I think typically the way an orthodontist is billing out their treatment, it's not based on those individual consultations, but it is great. I think during this time, the doctor could check in with their patient, right? If they, let's say they went to the office and they have all of the trays, they might want to bring them to a place where they could ship them to the patient. Sure. Um, and then they could do the consultation and basically allow them to say, okay, look, we checked in, everything seems to be moving okay. Now let me ship you the next four trays or whatever it might be. So you could do it for the ortho consults. Um, and I'm open to kind of working with any orthodontist to figure out how they would want to code that, but they're definitely going to want to document that they did a consultation and then kind of shipped out the next set of trays or whatever it might be. And I think even on wired braces or other, you know, options, any concern that people might have that patients may be very anxious about or think is more significant than you as a clinician know is, right, right. that's a chance for you to say, it's not like, this is not an emergency, stay at home, you know, whether I call in a prescription. I even spoke with one doctor who said, look, I had a mom, you know, her kid was just sitting home and knew they were eating more snacks and was carry prone, so called in a prescription for a delivery of more high fluoride uh, toothpaste. So sure. it ranges really from home care all the way up to, is there cellulitis and you have to really get into an office immediately. Now, if you don't, um, um, if the insurance is not, it's not a covered um, code, for example, um, it, what, what kind of uh, reimbursement, so what, what do you charge the patient? What, what a dental dentistry consult, uh, you know, I'm a patient, I'm calling, I have a toothache. Right. Uh, and it's no big deal. There, there is some charge, right? So we, that, we leave that to the practice. Some of them may want to do it just out of goodwill during this time. But we also understand right now your doors are closed and you need revenue to keep paying for everything that you've invested in your practice. Sure. So we've seen some practices offer that consult at $75, at $49, okay. which Patients seem more than willing to pay, and all you have to do then, if you're a fee-for-service practice or you know, support them with insurance claims, is submit the claim for them and then settle up when all this is, you know, when the dust has settled. So, you know, there's ways where you could send a link in your initial message to them saying, click here, process the payment, and then we'll set up the video consult. We'll document it in your, you know, in your ledger, and then when we get the claim back, if they accepted or denied it. We'll then figure out what you owe or what you're getting back. 
Right. And, and especially during this time, the last thing you want them to do is get in trouble with insurance, right. especially if you're not a fee-for-service practice, you're a PPO practice, right. and you have to abide by uh, the, the, the plan document, uh, whatever it allows you to do. Now you're charging 50 bucks um, for this particular insurance company. And then I guess, I guess um, I, I'm thinking that, um, uh, that you, you charge it, you, you kind of submit the claim, and then you make the adjustment. I think people will be okay, especially during this time when you're you know, taking care of urgent needs. Yeah, and I think more and more insurance companies are gonna start realizing the value of it, um, supporting dentists and allowing this to happen. I think another couple of points. So if you wanna do a prescription, now the DEA said you need to do a live video consult before calling in that prescription, especially sure. for a painkiller. So that's something that as doctors are doing this, they don't wanna issue anything that could be an issue later without the documentation and the right modality for conducting that evaluation. So the teledentistry and a live video consult is going to be more crucial than ever on that side of things when you're trying to just maybe address pain management or an antibiotic or something like that. Another thing that practices could do if people are sitting home and they're just thinking about they've got nothing but time and you don't have a lot of emergencies coming in, it could be a time to send out a message of like, let's just talk about your cosmetic ideas. Do you want to do anything like send me some photographs? You know, I know a lot of doctors have software to kind of enhance a smile, show what their work might look like. This might be a good time for that as well. That's not going to be something you're going to bill an evaluation code on, but it might be something that once things settle down, you've kind of teed up a lot of, you know, cosmetic cases, talk to patients about it and really got them thinking about what the next step might be for their smile. This is interesting because this you could pretty much use this uh, platform to uh, engage in communication with your with your with your um, uh, patients uh, about current needs or maybe future needs as well as it's what you're saying. Yeah, I think it's a great chance to really show kind of the initial responsiveness of a practice to their patients, yeah. and then the long term value they want to offer. I talked to one practice; they were like, "We're doing coloring sheets. We're going to make coloring sheets." that we're sending to parents, right? So that they could print them out and the kids have something to do while they're all locked in the living room together. Like there's an activity now, oh, and it's brought to you by your local dentist, your pediatric dentist, but there's just more ways to engage with patients. Um, and then that leads to, look, I'm open to you if you need me. I think there's other great opportunities in that if you're the practice in your community that has this service, right? post it on your local message boards on Facebook, and then you might get new patients. They might Correct. have a concern. They're going to not be able to go to any dentist. Let's go to the dentist who's tech enabled, who knows how to communicate with me, has this better service level. Um, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see. It's a scary time, but I think the right practices could use it to reassure their patients, reduce anxiety, manage prescriptions, bill for some evaluations that would be helpful to kind of generate some revenue while they're closed triage emergencies and really show dental care and oral health care is a bigger part of their lives and how do they go about doing that? You know, I'm seeing uh, a lot of innovation, you know, in crisis times, sometimes, you know, you have to innovate and think about what do you do, right? How do you, how do you prepare yourself for a zero revenue month? And, 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 and that's where innovation comes in. So I have a lot of clients today that are actively advertising out there on platforms for, uh, for emergencies. Yeah, yeah. For, for new patients. And if there is a mechanism, uh, a teledentistry mechanism, then I think patients are going to be more likely uh, to heed that because a lot of people are scared um, yeah. today, especially when you listen to the media, people are scared to go into any medical professional, dental professional's office uh, with the fear that uh, they might contract the disease. So uh, this might, this might uh, um, give you a boost to your campaigns for new patients for emergencies. Yeah. Uh, knowing that they, there is a safe HIPAA compliant platform uh, where they can get their uh, emergencies diagnosed and triaged in, 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 in a quick manner uh, without it costing them too much money. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we think that reassurance to patients is crucial and also really helping a patient understand it is an emergency that they need to come in. What are the steps we're going to take when you come into the office? Do not sit in the waiting room. Do not just go right in. You're going to go to the operatory on the left. That's right. dedicated to that patient. I think all of those little steps that if you have people waiting in your parking lot instead of waiting in your office, you're not only doing the right thing by infection control, you're also reassuring patients who are 
you know, potentially wearing gloves and masks when they're going into a store. Like we care about you. We're not going to make you exposed to anyone else. We're coordinating this. So we call us when you're here, right? We've done the consult previously. We know what you need. The room is prepped. You're in, we're going to do what we need to do. And then you're going to go. We'll settle up billing later. This is great advice. I absolutely great advice. Uh, so, so uh, a dental office, um, if they're watching this right now, and they, there's like, all right, we want to sign up for mouthwash teledent program. How fast, how quickly can they get situated? What do they need? Licenses? Uh, I'm assuming just a state license, but um, what do they need to get set up? Yeah, great question. So you can sign up on our website at mouthwatch.com. We're offering a special offer that you guys will talk about, which is we're waiving the first month fee, uh, and which is $149 per month. And then we're waiving the setup fee, which is normally $250, um, so that you can register up to 10 providers in your practice. So think hygienists, office team, dentists, they're all registered in the system. As soon as you sign up, we're gonna ask you some questions about who do you want input into the system. We also have some advanced tools for structuring multiple locations. So if you have 12 locations okay, and you want to doctor assigned to three of them or a doctor assigned to six of them however you want to manage kind of patient data science practice detailing and even branding to a degree we can cover that so on our onboarding team will get you all set up we'll do some we've been so busy we're doing two live trainings a day instead of individualized trainings right. we've got a lot of recordings and resources and then you're up and running and you can start figuring out how you want to approach it. We've got tools for that to help you introduce it to your patients, um, register them, and then start communicating uh, with your patients in real time. And we're here to help you guys during this time that's really you know, pretty challenging and, and groundbreaking and new. So I think we wanted to make this as easy as possible. That's why we don't really, we start with 10 providers because we know every practice is gonna probably have someone on the office team who's helping with the scheduling of these things. Maybe the hygienists are reaching out for kind of home care instruction and the doctor. I talked to a doctor yesterday. He said he did 16 virtual consults yesterday. Fantastic. So he just got it set up, I think on Friday of last week, reached out to his patients, set this up. He added a link on his website for people to request the consult and he was off and running and he was charging them a fee up front. So this was not someone who, you know, I think 16, at, I think he was charging $75 each. So he's sitting at home, he's quarantined, he's able to still consult his patients and figure out some things and help them out. That's, that's, that's fantastic. I think there's a lot of people that are gonna look at this stuff and, and, and get going. Yeah. From a patient standpoint, if I'm not an existing patient, I'm a brand new patient and I look at the ad, uh, and I want to I want to consult. Um, how does the patient go about getting a, a consult? Um, so is there some messaging that hey, a brand new patient came to uh, you know through the link, uh, and then and then a live dentist becomes available to kind of give them a video consult. How does that work? So we're trying to speed that up, but right now it is pretty quick. That patient would request a consultation. Yes. You'd register them in the system and okay. they get invited. And once they're registered in the portal, right away they could see that you're online, you could see that they're available, send them the welcome message, schedule the consult, or go right into doing it there. Um, we're adding a lot of stuff in the next couple of days and weeks of syncing to calendars. So it's on your calendar, it's on the patient's calendar, integrated payments so that they're processing a payment, um, adding screening forms and health histories so that you pull up as a doctor, you see they've paid, this is their chief complaint, this is their medical history, any medications, and then you can go into the consult right away. Another great part that we haven't talked about too much, you could even loop in a specialist in our consults. So it could be the dentist, and if there's an oral surgeon or a periodontist in your group, you can add them in, and now the patient's talking to the surgeon and the doctor, the dentist, about whatever concern there might be. At the same time. At the same time. So you're doing really care coordination and if you've got patients who are in the hospital, or if you've got patients that need to go to a hospital setting, like for a significant emergency, you can even asynchronously, so not in real time, you could just share all of the case information and invite that doctor to review it so they know what they're getting into when the patient's referred to them. 
That is that is fascinating. I I I mean, this is such an education for me. Uh, I've been wanting to uh, understand your platform for a while now, but but um, this is this is pretty incredible, especially during this time. Um, so 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 you can. Uh, it takes not a long time to get onboarded. Uh, well, it's same day, yeah, same day. If you sign up in the morning, we'll register everyone. By the end of the day, you can introduce it, train up your team on it, and then start introducing it to some patients, and you're good to go. And I think right now it's, you know, we're trying to help people understand this is your workflow. We love it because we're so in deep with it. But for a practice that's new to it is they're like, how am I scheduling an appointment for a teledentistry consult? Well, how did you schedule an appointment for a visit to your office? Someone would call, you'd right. put them on the calendar, you'd then initiate the video consult as opposed to going into the operatory to see them. So we're really just trying to show them this is the same approach. You're just doing it with technology, not in a physical location. Right, and, and, and now it al also allows you to kind of keep some of your core team intact, right? right. Because now they're doing uh, maybe one hygienist, uh, a, an assistant, and not even I, to kind of coordinate, you know, look to keep the portal up there to make sure that any new consoles that are coming in, we're following up with them. Um, and, and, you know, kind of uh, at least, because right now the, 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 the critical concern is that what team members do stay and what team members are laid off Right. or furloughed for a temporary period of time. Uh, so that kind of solves that as well, especially if you can uh, get, uh, get this program going quickly. Yeah, we've been saying, like, take a look at your patients you saw in the last three months and have your hygienist start reaching out to those patients in Teledent, just checking in. You know, we know we placed a crown. We wanted to see how the implant was healing. Whatever those patients look like, and we're trying to provide some recommendations, but I think that becomes a way that the office team can really help check in with patients that are top of mind, that recently had work done. And then if the doctor does need to consult with them for a virtual exam, that's something that makes more sense because you've reached out, you've been proactive, and there's definitely a concern that the patient recognized, which now justifies the virtual consult, right? And the limited evaluation. So you might use that staff member who's sitting at home waiting, twiddling their thumbs and you know, homeschooling their kid right now, figure out some time for them to be able to reach out to the patients and kind of, you know, I keep saying tee up, but really tee up the virtual consults. So suddenly a doctor's day is full of these 15 minute consults with their patients, which are billable. So if I were to summarize, if you were to summarize uh, the, the four or five steps doctors can do now to get, get, get going on, on your platform, uh, what would they be? Go to mouthwatch.com, sign up for our monthly subscription to Teledent. Teledent is the name of our platform. We then invite you to, you get an email right away that says, tell us about your practice. We're gonna register you in the system. We're gonna invite you to a live training that same day or recorded training or review our online learning tools. Once you're comfortable with that, you're good to go. Your team can log in, register, and they can start inviting patients into the portal. You're good to go. What you want to do then on the marketing side might be to introduce it to patients, add something to your website. You know, we want to make a toolkit that helps you learn how to implement that and kind of best practices for that. But you're off and running. You can start doing virtual consults. You're going to probably want to build them in your existing practice management software. Um, and you, you can offer this very quickly, kind of by the start one morning, the next morning you're offering it to their patients. That's fantastic. Um, and then um, to end, I think I, I'm gonna uh, put the offer on your screen, uh, on our screen here. Uh, you have a special offer, you're waiving uh, the $250 in setup fees and, and the first month, um, uh, first month, of, which is $149. It's almost a $399 value. Yep. Um, the and, and and look at look at our screen over here and and, and contact uh, Brandt and his team who's ready not only to get get you set up but also to give you some practical tools and guidance on how to make this successful. Uh, it's not only during this time but even after that. Um, Brandt, I really thank you for this. Uh, I know you're a very busy man today, and I thank you for uh, helping um, uh, us uh, get this message out to as many people as possible, our clients and the entire industry because they really need it. I think telemedicine, teledentistry is going to be part of our lives in the future. And I think um, if, if there is a time to start this process, it is now uh, during, during the COVID-19 crisis. 
Uh, I really want to thank you for this. Um, um, again, the number uh, to reach Mouthwatch is on the screen. Um, contact them and they'll be more than happy to help. Thank you so much for this morning. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and keep up the great work in educating all the practices out there on kind of how to get through some of this stuff now and with an eye on the future. Thank you, Brian. All right, thanks everyone.